and welcome to another beautiful day in Paris. Today it is the weekend and it's morning, nine o'clock but it's still dark outside, that's just autumn for you. Um, I thought I would go out for breakfast at Lady de Magot. First of all because I've run out of coffee so I need to go out for coffee and I thought if I need to go out first thing in the morning then I might as well go out for a night's breakfast. It's famous for the literary figures and politicians, all the people who used to meet there, it was their favourite go-to spot in Paris and I thought that I would love to go and try it out for myself, you know, for the atmosphere. I know it'll be overpriced because of the touristic attraction, but I do want to try it out for myself and I'll go have a breakfast, a classic Parisian breakfast with um, coffee, fresh juice and croissants and I will take you along with me and show you what it's like. So, let's go. So outfit today, chicken scarf and a French berry, of course. <laughs> wonderful time. I had breakfast by myself, you know, I didn't have company or anything, but I enjoyed my own company. I brought a book to read and it was a very peaceful morning and it was raining as well, but because I was in the outdoor seating, which was um, under like a, I don't know, a conservatory thing, you could hear the rain um, pattering on, on the roof and it was really cosy and I had a cappuccino, fresh orange juice, a croissant and a little baguette with some butter and jam and it was really lovely. Um, and I really enjoyed it and the quality of the food there was really good. It was a bit overpriced. It was a set, I think it was called like the Comple or something like that, so a complete breakfast and it was 20 euros so a little bit pricey but it's not like I go there every day. It was to treat myself and to experience Les Deux Magots and I really enjoyed it and it was incredible sitting there and thinking about the amazing people who sat there before me because people like Ernest Hemingway, whose book I read not too long ago, and Pablo Picasso, Simone de Beauvoir, like they all used to eat there and visit there really regularly. So it was cool to sit there and think about all the other people who'd been there before as well. Afterwards, I went on a little bit of a shopping trip because I had to go to get some coffee capsules from Nespresso and I picked up, they're doing a limited edition pumpkin spice flavour, so I'm really excited to try that out because, um, I don't know, I, I like pumpkin spice but I don't like the ones from Starbucks because they're too sickly sweet, so I'm excited to see how the Nespresso ones are because I often do my own homemade ones so I'll add some cinnamon and different ground spices and maybe a little bit of maple syrup to it to create my own. Um, pumpkin spice lattes but I don't like the Starbucks ones so I'm interested to see the Nespresso ones because so far their other like sweet coffees like the caramel or the hazelnut ones are really nice because they're not sickly sweet it's just got a subtle flavour so yeah I'm excited to try the limited edition pumpkin spice and I also went to Le Bon Marché um, and they gave me this cute Christmas themed bag it's the 30th of October okay bear that in mind and I've got a Christmas themed bag and inside it was filled with Christmas lights and Christmas decorations and they also had this thing set up where it was like an area with lots of small businesses with Christmas gift ideas I suppose and they wrapped them up and it was really lovely and you could get like personalised gifts. They had a man with machinery where he made personalised items from real leather so um, I don't know like guitar straps and little 
um, pouches and things like that and he would be making them on the spot and there were different jewellery companies and um, one that had like vintage glasses and goblets and things like that with pure wax candles inside which was a really clever idea a way of reusing old items um, and it was a, like a charity store so it was really cool to see them but I feel like it's a bit early for full on Christmas <laughs> I wasn't expecting it but I went there for a particular reason because um, there's this um, French girl that I follow on Instagram called Camille Yolen and she's recently started her own makeup brand and I've been following her for a long time because I just really admire her aesthetic and her style and she's just goals basically like the classic French girl if you imagine a Parisian girl so she's a joy to follow on Instagram and I really wanted to get her products and I saw that she came out with makeup so I did pick up a few items so her makeup brand has only just launched and they haven't got that many products but I did pick up they have these they're basically like lipsticks and um, they're called um like lip mousses so it's not really a stick it's a mousse and it's really cute the way they're packaged i love the floral designs it's like a vintage it kind of reminds me of kath kidston in terms of the style and um, it's really pretty and i'll show you what they look like inside so the way that it works is that they're in little tubes like this so they look a bit like paint tubes i think that was the idea behind the brand and um, it's a mousse and you can use it on your lips and also on your face for like um, blush or something and I'm just really excited to try these out because they look really cute and the colours look really lovely as well and I think because it's a mousse the texture is going to be really lush and lovely to apply so I'll try this out probably tomorrow and I'll film it as well so that you can see what it looks like but yeah um, it's called Lip and Cheek Mousse and I got the three different colours that were available because um, this one is nude red, it's called Daphne and it's the one that probably is most lim similar to what I wear most of the time because I prefer um, like nudey plum tones um, and then I also got this one which is Pivoine which means peony which is my favourite flower as well so and it's more of a pinky colour and then I got the classic um, iconic red Garance um, because I don't really have any red and when it gets to more Christmas time I do like to wear red so I thought that would be handy and the way you apply it is give me a second with this it's um, the Le Ponceau à Lèvres so it's like a paintbrush for your lips and it's this cute little it's this cute little brush and it's got a lid and basically it looks like this and so when you apply it you can use the brush and put the mousse onto the brush and then just apply it to your lips and I'm really excited to try it out because they look like they're really good quality and it's something a bit different I've only ever had lipsticks and glosses never lip mousses so yeah that's what I picked up and I thought it was fitting while I'm in Paris to you know buy things from a French brand by someone who lives in Paris you know um, I was really excited when I saw this stuff came out so I thought I had to go and buy it and I will let you know what my thoughts but I'm very excited to try it out so now I'm just going to be getting on with some work, basically in my life now, just uni work. Um, I have a lot of stuff to do for all of my different units. Um, I have one unit which is called um, Rehabilitation and Intervention on Old Buildings. And for that we've had this task where we've been put into pairs and we had to go around Paris and we'd be given a list of different periods of buildings and we had to find examples and like annotate them to show how we were able to identify them. Um, so it's just dating buildings around Paris, which was really fun to do, but now it's just a case of <laughs> creating the whole document, putting it together. And actually it was very hard because lots of the buildings look very similar, so it's hard to identify them. And then I've got another unit, the project unit, where um, the project is a social housing scheme and we've been given an existing building, which I visited yesterday, and it's like a 70s abandoned office building. We have to um, analyse the building because we're going to soon start designing housing to go inside of it um, so there's that and then there's another unit I'm just going to grab the book and show you another unit that I'm studying is called heritage and change and for that I've got to do a fiche de lecture which is like a an essay about a book that I'm reading I'm reading this one it's Violet le Duc's Histoire d'une maison so um, like story of a house and I'm reading this book and I'm enjoying it because it's actually about 
it's it's weird because it's a mix between fiction and non-fiction because it's kind of fiction because it's about um, a family who's building a house for a daughter who's just been married, so for her and her new part, um, her husband. But it's the cousin is an architect and he comes and he's helping the family do it. So he's teaching them how to build houses and like the theory and concepts behind construction and stuff. So it's like he's explaining things, but then it's set within an, a fiction story. So it's interestingly done and it makes it more interesting to read as well. So I'm enjoying it, but it's just a matter of cracking on. Obviously, it's going to take me longer to read it than it would French students because I'm not French. So, <laughs> but I'm surprised with how well I'm managing to cope. It's more just the terminology. That's what I'm struggling with, really, the specific terminology around architecture. But generally, I feel like I'm managing to cope with the language, um, which is good. <laughs> but it's just lots of different things to do, lots of units, lots of assignments. So I'm very busy and I'll just be cracking on with this now. So I will see you later. Hello, it's been a week since I last filmed. The week has just been very crazy and busy, so I haven't had the opportunity to. But, as you can see, it's another day, and I'm going to bring you along with me. And I'm in the middle of doing my makeup, and I'm going to put my lipstick on now. The new lip mousse that I got, and I've been saving it so that the first time I try it on, I can do it with you guys to tell you what I think about it, and just give a little review of it. So, I'm about to try it on. Um, it'll be interesting applying it with the little brush because I've never, I don't know, with lip glosses normally you just do it straight from the tube or with lipsticks obviously it's a stick so I don't know how it's going to be, if it's going to be easy or difficult to apply it with the tube and um, with a brush from, mousse from the tube but we'll see. So I'm going to put a little bit on the brush. Um, first impression is that it looks very fluffy and airy, like like a mousse basically, so I guess that's why it's called lip mousse and um, the colour does look very nice, I don't know if you can see, it looks very pigmented and um, yeah, I'll try it on. I may have put a bit too much on the brush. <laughs> there we go. This was the colour Daphne, so this is the one that's supposed to be a nudie tone. And I do like it. You don't actually need much to get the colour, because I put way too much onto the brush and it was only a tiny blob, so it's a very strong pigmentation and it's got a really lovely feeling on your lips, it feels very light because sometimes lipsticks can feel a bit like, I don't know, sticky, you can feel it on your lips but this one, it's very nice. It seems like it um, adds the colour and it's still quite moisturising, it's not dry or anything, some lipsticks can also be quite dry and go a bit flaky but it's very, mm, I'm happy with it. Um, the colour is very nice and it was quite easy to apply with the brush. Um, yeah, overall, I would give it a very positive review. So, I'll be definitely using more products from the brand Yolen. <laughs> yeah, so the plan for today is that, um, well, last week I went for breakfast at Le Du Mago, which is a literary cafe. I showed you what I had, and it was really good. Um, the baked goods were amazing. The croissant was just top notch. Um, and I thought that today I would go for breakfast at Café de Flor because it's the other literary cafe, which is located directly beside Le Du Mago. So I thought I would go and then that way I can tell you guys which one's better, which one I prefer, which one is worth the money more um, because they're kind of two almost rival cafes. And both of them had famous people who used to go there regularly as their favourite hangout spots. And I guess that way I can compare them, compare what they have on offer and the prices and then let you know which one I would recommend more if you wanted to go to one in Paris. So. That's what I'm planning to do. Afterwards I'm going to go to Musée d'Orsay, which is an art gallery. Um, I know they have lots of Impressionist art, and I love Impressionist art, so... Um, and it's located in an old train station, so the building is very beautiful. And it's really famous, and I haven't been yet, which is a bit of a shame since I've been here for a few months already in Paris, so I need to go. Um, so that's what my plan is for today. So, let's go!
casually walking past the loop. Even after living here for a few months, I still get those pinch me moments where I'm like walking for breakfast and I just pass these incredible buildings. I'm like, how can I live here? It's not possible, it's like a dream, but it's amazing. I want it my, my, my way. So good and the coffee was good it's hard to find good coffee in paris so i was impressed slightly overpriced well slightly very overpriced but there you go <laughs> that's the experience now i'm at the musée d'orsay i'm about to go in and i'm really looking forward to getting my art dose so yeah let's go and explore to the Musée d'Orsay. I've had a wonderful time. It's really late and I haven't had lunch so I'm starving. So it's time to head back and make something to eat. I'm thinking a warm cozy soup because I have some soup so I'm gonna warm that up. eaten um, some dinner and now I'm just trying to recover my energy a bit because it's been a long day I didn't get back until like six o'clock considering I left at half nine to go out for breakfast so it's been a long day of walking around Paris I've really enjoyed it it's been a good day but I'm tired um so in terms of which is better Les Deux Magots or Café de Flore personally I would say Les Deux Magots and there's a few reasons so first of all um in terms of the actual menu, when you go there for breakfast, there's a breakfast set menu at Lido Mago. So you get um, a hot drink, fruit juice, and like freshly squeezed orange juice, and then a pastry, so a croissant, and then a bit of baguette with jam and butter. And that's like a, a set breakfast for 20 euros. So it's good because you can save some money. I mean, it's still expensive, 
but it's better to get a set than to buy things individually. In Café de Floch they don't have that, so it's more expensive to go there. And in terms of the service, I mean maybe it was just a personal thing because obviously it depends on what day you go, um, if you're lucky or not with who's serving you, but when I was at Le Dumago, they were really good, the guy was really friendly and um, the waiter was, you know, chatting to the people at the tables and everything, so it was a really nice atmosphere. Um, but at Café de Floch, the guy was a bit rude. I had to wait a long time for my omelette. I ordered a, a mushroom omelette, but he brought the coffee and the croissant, and then, like, I don't know, f 15 minutes later, he brought the omelette, and it was a bit cold, so obviously it had been sitting on the side, and he just hadn't brought it over, and it was a bit... If you're going to pay so much and go to such a fancy place, you'd expect the service to be a bit better. But maybe that was just a personal experience because the waiter was bad and normally it's fine. I don't know. <laughs> um, obviously the location is the same because they're right next to each other, so that's even between them. But personally my experience was better at Le de Magot. And in terms of like the quality of the food, I would say... I don't know, the orange juice was the same in both places, it's just fresh orange juice. The pastries were good in both places, they were both really good quality pastry so it is worth the money to go there because the food is good and um, the coffee I can't really compare because it wasn't good at Le de Magot but I got a cappuccino and it was just very milky maybe if I got an espresso like I did at Café de Flore it would have been good but the coffee was better at Café de Flore so there's my review of the two places and then afterwards you saw we went to um, the Musée d'Orsay which is set in a former train station so the building is really interesting and the way that an art gallery has been fitted inside of a train station because it wasn't obviously built as an art gallery so it's interesting to walk around and it has a lot of art on display. I particularly liked all of the Impressionist art because if you know me, you know I love Impressionism. Claude Monet is my favourite painter and there were lots of his pieces there so I enjoyed looking at them. And there's a particular painting of his called The Lunch or Le Déjeuner um, which was there and it is my favourite painting in the whole world. Oh my gosh, it is so beautiful. I just sat on, luckily there was a bench in front of it so I just sat on that bench for like 10 minutes staring at it. Um, it's very big, I didn't expect it to be so big in real life but I love that aspect because it feels like you're there. There's a table in the foreground of the photo with like um, tea set up with a bowl of peaches and bread and beautiful teacups and a silver teapot and it's right at the front and then behind you see the house and the gardens and um, a straw hat um, like a sun hat and some ladies walking and a kid playing on the floor and it's just so peaceful and idyllic and I just want to step into the painting and it's it was a joy to just sit and look at it and imagine myself there it was really good um, and yeah and they had a range of different art as well they had older pieces all the way up until like um, 20th century art and as well as that they had um, a section with furniture so Art Nouveau furniture and things like that which was a bit different and sculptures it was a good um, art gallery and I would say it was large but not overwhelmingly large so well I spent all day there but I did sit and um, take my time going around and they had a restaurant a cafe so if you wanted you could make a day of it and have some breaks in between but overall I had a really good time um, and I hope you enjoyed walking around as well with me. Um, so if you enjoyed my video, then please like it and subscribe to my channel to join me on more adventures around Paris. And with that, I will see you next time. Bye!